the biggest miscarriage of justice in modern UK history happened at the post office. Hi there, everyone. It's Jeff, and this is Plain English, where we help you upgrade your English with stories about current events and trending topics. And this is a big trending topic in the UK right now. A miscarriage of justice is when something goes wrong with the justice system, when there's some outcome that's not right, not just with the courts or police. And a scandal at the post office is being called one of the biggest miscarriages of justice in modern British history. Thousands of post office workers were accused of stealing money. Many went to jail. Some went bankrupt paying the money back. But the whole thing was the result of a computer problem. That's today's story. In the second half of the audio lesson, I'll show you how to use the expression drop off. This is lesson 651, so that means JR has uploaded the full content to plainenglish.com slash 651. That includes the free transcripts, plainenglish.com slash 651. In the UK, the post office is exactly what it says in the name, the post office. It's not the service that delivers the mail. That's called the Royal Mail. The post office is a network of small shops around the country, 11,500 of them. You can find them in London neighborhoods. You can find them in very small towns. You can do a lot of things at the post office. You can buy stamps. You can drop off mail and packages to be delivered to other parts of the UK and the world. You can put your mail on hold while you travel. Post offices also offer some limited financial services. You can cash checks collect a pension payment, and pay utility bills. The post office is owned by the government. However, individual shops are owned by franchisees called sub-postmasters. It's like McDonald's or Marriott Hotels. The brand is one company but the individual locations are owned by many individual business owners. In 1999, the post office, the national organization, decided to implement a new computer system in all its shops. The sub-postmasters the owners of individual shops, were required to use the new system. The system was made by Fujitsu, the Japanese technology company. The system would, for the first time, computerize the post office accounting and inventory systems. But many sub-postmasters got an unpleasant surprise with the new system. The new computer system said that money was missing from their post offices. Remember that each branch is owned by an individual, and any time there is a shortfall, any time money is missing, any time the individual branch collected less 
than it should have for its business activities. Whenever that happened, the subpostmaster was responsible. The subpostmasters had to pay the shortfall out of their own pockets. It wasn't just a few isolated incidents. This happened over and over across hundreds of post offices around the UK. Although this happened to a lot of people, the sub-postmasters didn't talk to each other. The union that represents them didn't connect the dots. So every person accused thought they were the only ones experiencing the problem. They felt guilty. They felt like they had done something wrong. They felt incompetent and they were scared. The law says they personally had to pay back any shortfall. But that's not all. A shortfall means that money was missing and the sub-postmasters were accused of stealing it. They had to pay the money back and then possibly answer for the crime of stealing it or covering it up. Many sub-postmasters lost their life savings paying back the shortfalls from their offices. Others went deep into personal debt. Marriages were ruined over it. Four accused sub-postmasters committed suicide. Many pleaded guilty to false accounting because it seemed like the easiest way out. Over about 15 years, 900 sub-postmasters were accused of stealing money from their branches. Many hundreds, maybe thousands more, quietly paid shortfalls out of their pockets. 700 were convicted and over 400 went to jail. But the sub-postmasters weren't at fault. The computer system from Fujitsu got the numbers all wrong. The post office first became aware of problems in Horizon in 2010, but they continued to report sub-postmasters for theft until 2015. A handful of accused sub-postmasters fought back, and finally, the UK's High Court ruled in 2019 that Horizon, the computer program, had defects, that the reported shortfalls were the result of a mistake in the software, not wrongdoing by sub-postmasters. But that ruling came almost 20 years after the system was implemented. 20 years this was going on. Although the scandal was reported in the media over the years, it didn't capture the attention of the British public and politicians until now. A recent documentary on the British channel ITV dramatized the scandal. The show is called Mr. Bates vs. the Post Office, and it tells the story of Alan Bates, the sub-postmaster who led the campaign at the High Court. It's ITV's most popular show in three years. The post office admitted it was at fault years ago, but neither it nor the British government adequately compensated 
the sub-postmasters who were falsely accused. The government didn't go back and erase the prosecutions from the past or provide compensation for people who paid shortfalls out of their own pockets. Now, though, with the bright lights of the TV special on the issue, things are starting to change. An investigative commission called this a miscarriage of justice and the biggest single series of wrongful convictions in British legal history. Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister, pledged that the government would swiftly exonerate and compensate those who were wrongly accused. The government has set up three different funds to pay back the hundreds of victims. What I don't understand, there is so much I don't understand. How did this take so long? Either thousands of people were stealing from the post office, or there was a bug in the system. I mean, which is more likely? I'm not naive enough to think that the justice system in any country always gets things right, but I would like to believe that courts in the UK and other Western countries don't ever get things so wrong. But here's the worst part. Fujitsu still provides the accounting system for the post office. The company says the problems have been fixed. Drop off is a phrasal verb that means to leave something at a specific location. Typically, we use drop off when we leave something somewhere and it will be collected, delivered, or processed later. For example, if I have to send a package to someone in another city, I can drop the package off at the post office or at a delivery service like DHL or UPS. When I drop the package off, I take it to the post office and I leave it there. And the post office processes it. They do something else with it. The post office is not the final destination. I dropped the package off means I took it to the post office, I left it there, and the post office is going to do something with it. I haven't had clothes dry cleaned in I can't tell you how long, but before COVID, I wore dress slacks, dress shirts, suits, and sport coats to work, and I would drop those clothes off at the dry cleaners. I would take them to the cleaners. I would leave them there. The cleaners would do something with the clothes. They would clean them and return them to me. I have to drop off my clothes at the cleaners means I have to take my clothes to the cleaners And it makes sense because there's some additional processing later. Leaving my clothes there is not the final step in the process. Imagine you're taking a trip. You fly to another city. You rent a car. You enjoy your vacation. Now you're on your way home. When you get to the airport, you drop the car off at the rental car return center. You deliver the car, you take it there, you leave it there, you walk away, and the car goes through the return process, cleaning whatever, before it's returned back to the lot. You dropped the car off. There are lots of other times to use drop off. 
you might need to drop your computer off with your company's IT department for repairs. If a family member is sick, you might drop some homemade meals off at their house. After a natural disaster, organizations might collect canned food and clothing for people who can't go back to their homes. If that's the case, they might specify drop-off centers where you can drop off donations. So that's how it works with objects. You can use drop off with people too. When you use drop off with people, it means you take them somewhere and then you leave. Can you drop me off at the airport? That means can you drive me to the airport? And if you drop someone off at the airport, you pull up to the curb, the other person gets out of the car, goes into the airport, and you leave. How did you get to school as a kid? I took a yellow school bus, but if I missed the bus, my mom dropped me off at school. She took me to school in the car. I got out and she left. She dropped me off. Kids are always being dropped off somewhere. As a kid, I went to the YMCA to exercise after school or on weekends. But that was before I had a driver's license. So when I went to exercise, my mom would drop me off. She'd leave me there and then go do other things. The opposite of drop someone off is to pick someone up. So my mom would drop me off at the YMCA, then she would pick me up a couple of hours later. She was good that way. Sometimes if you take an Uber or other rideshare service, the map tells the driver to circle the block so you can get to the exact address. But often, it's easier to just get out of the car a little earlier instead of waiting to drive all the way around a block. If that ever happens to you, you can say to the driver, you can drop me off at the corner. That means you can stop and let me get out here at the corner instead of circling the entire block. Just drop me off at the corner. And that's all for today. Drop off is a really good one. I'm surprised we haven't done it yet, but now you know how to use it. And this is really useful. Speaking of really useful, JR has uploaded all of today's lesson resources, the transcripts, the translations, the quizzes and exercises, all of that stuff to plainenglish.com slash 651. So make sure to check that out. And next week, we'll be back with a new Plain English. See you then.